Today I've got a guest from the Netherlands, a beautiful country that I've been to a couple of times. I uh, really enjoyed exploring um, that lovely place uh, many years ago. Looking forward to getting back there again one day and doing some talks. We've got lots of fabulous success stories coming out of the Netherlands, and we're about to hear from another today. His name is Frank, and we connected over email after he emailed me after uh, doing the program for five months. And I actually want to read out his email before we uh, hear from Frank, because it was uh, really um, uh, a fun one to read. He wrote, your program is too good in capital letters with exclamation marks. In June, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid. I bought your program and did everything I could to fight my rheumatoid arthritis, exercise, Bikram yoga, massage painful fingers, took, every, took all the food to the extreme, etc. The results from my blood tests became excellent. This week I met my new rheumatologist and she said my former rheumatologist, who I've only seen twice, must have made a mistake. And I do not have rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> when I said it was because of my diet, she said that diet has no effect on rheumatoid arthritis. I'm convinced my pain and problems will come back if I became the old Frank again, where I used to eat lots of meat and drink lots of coffee, drink a lot of beer, eat a lot of fat instead of salads and fruits and so forth. I think she's never seen something like this before. And of course, she can't believe it. Well, Frank, what an email to write. Thank you very much for sending me that. Yes, you're welcome. How does it feel to be able to have that kind of outcome um, after doing all of those, um, uh, as you put it, extreme things for the last five months? Uh, now I feel normal again. <laughs> I, uh, when I was diagnosed with uh, Roma, then I didn't feel very well, and now I feel normal again. It's quite incredible, so isn't it? It feels, it feels good. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's in, in, incredible when uh, when you have the symptoms of uh, Roma, and uh, then it's incredible that you can heal again. It's uh, even if the doctors say it's impossible. Yes, so it's it, great. It, it is. It is. Um, now, tell us how bad were you when you first um, were diagnosed? Give us an idea of what kind of symptoms you had. Yes, I, I will tell my story because uh, in in, uh, in the first time I didn't uh, expect to have uh, rheuma or something like that. I uh, I was having troubles with my uh, uh, back pain in the lower back mm -hmm. uh, and also pain in my knee and also pain in my arm. But uh, four weeks ago I had uh, an uh, an operation on my uh, my shoulder, so. That's normal that, that I had pain in my shoulder. It was normal normal that I had pain in uh, the pain in my low back mm -hmm. uh, because uh, I'm working uh, heavy work, so it was possible because of that from the, from the work. And I was also pain in my knees, in, in one knee, in my right knee. And it was all a couple of days. And the morning when I wake up, it was. Uh, it took me about twenty minutes. Uh, to get out of my bed, uh, or to, uh, to put out the alarm, and I was uh, a lot of pain in, in uh, yeah, the parts of my shoulder, my, my knee, and my my back, and a couple of days, and it was yeah too much. So I went to the doctor, and I came to the doctor, and he said, "What do you have?" I said, uh, "My my shoulder, my uh, yeah, my back, and my knee," and. He said, "Now let's look at your knee." And in two minutes, he said, "Yes, you had uh, meniscus operation uh, several years ago, and it's because of that, it's more than ten years ago." So, uh, yeah, come back in four weeks if uh, if it's not okay. I said, "Jesus <laughs> Christ, it's unbelievable." But I, uh, I I went home and I thought to myself, ah, "That's incredible." It took me it take me more than twenty minutes to get out of my bed. Yeah. And then uh, uh, a lot of pain, but at the end of the day, I was I was normal again because the whole day I had to work. In the beginning, it was very tough to work in, but I was moving, moving, moving the whole day. And at the end of the day, I was normal. And I went to bed and I wake up and I was stiff, a lot of pain. So I thought uh, I can't go on uh, like this because uh, I have my own job and yeah, uh, I have to work. 
So I called uh, uh, someone else uh, uh, to look at my knee, and uh, I went there a couple of times, and he said, uh, "Yeah, I can't help it because yeah, it's not not normal." And yeah, uh, then there was one day my uh, my left uh, arm was uh, totally fixed; I couldn't move it the whole the whole night. And then I went to the doctor again. And now he said, uh, "Oh, you have to, to go straight to the uh, to the hospital." And I went to the hospital. Uh, I got uh, medicines for the uh, uh, probably for the inflammation, uh, I guess. I went to the hospital, and yeah, uh, in the hospital they took my uh, blood, and uh, I went home. And the day after uh, that, I was called again, and uh, they said you have to come again to the hospital because uh, yeah, your uh, uh, how do you say that? The, there was a lot of inflammation in my body. Mm-hmm. The, it was very high. They said it's, it's immense height. It's uh, enormous. So we have to come again, and we can take uh, some blood, and we take it apart, and we can investigate the blood. Okay. And yeah, then I heard uh, there was something not normal in my body. And a couple of weeks later, I heard uh, I have uh, aroma. Rheumatic arthritis, and now uh, that's when I uh, asked uh, my doctor, my uh, rheumatologist, uh, how come uh, did I get it? And I said uh, there is no reason. And I said, what can I do to to heal it? Uh, you can heal it. You have it your whole life, and sometimes you feel more than, than less, and more than less. But it's uh, not curable. I said, uh, I don't accept accept this. And that's when, to, when I started to search on the internet to look what I could do about it. Uh, I find a couple of things and also your program. So that's a little bit of my story. And uh, do, you, do you remember? I ordered, yeah. Do you remember how high? I ordered just. You remember how high your information, information was? Yeah. Uh, I have uh, also standing here, it was a little bit 30, 36. The BSE was 36. Um, the CRP or the ESR? Uh, I think that's, it's, uh, it's, I don't know. It's, it's, in, it's in Dutch. It's a BIG. BSE, it's for me for me the information. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was it it normally it's, it, it can be to between uh, zero and fifteen. Yeah. And for me it was thirty thirty six. Mm-hmm. Okay. Have you had it measured recently? Uh, yes. The uh, the last months it's uh, two only two. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Fantastic. Yes. The first the first time it was thirty six, and then I. Yeah, started uh, changing my diet, and then it became twenty eight, and then it became two, 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 and now still only two. That's fantastic! I love it. Two, 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 two is yes. what what you want to hear, isn't it? Um, can yes. you tell me um when you got our program and you looked at it and you saw what was recommended? What were your first initial thoughts? Uh. When I when I got your program first, I started uh, reading, and what was very important for me is uh, in it I could read uh, what it was, uh, what went on in your body, and I could believe it. I, I think Jesus Christ, there's someone who's explaining it, and I, I could believe it's what you said because I know uh, food is very good for for your body and food can heal yourself. I've read books about it in in the past, so it was uh, very trustworthy for me, and yeah, that's why I uh, thought it it might help, and I was convinced it could help me. Mm. Um, how quickly uh, did you see results once you began? Uh, yeah, it's very uh, hard to see results because uh, I had a lot of pain when I uh, when I didn't go to the, before I went to the hospital, mm. and after that I also got medicines from uh, I got uh, 
uh, first Diclo Flanoc, and also I got uh, uh, Skyke. Uh, another one, and then I got uh, Sofa Sal- Salazine. Mm-hmm. So it's very difficult uh, to say because of the food or or because of the medicines I got. Yes, I got prednisone, but that was the other one. Prednisone. But uh, you you. It, because you, you have and your food and you have your medicines. Yeah. You don't know what what's working. So yeah, absolutely. It's very difficult to, to explain. Yes, absolutely. So, and that was also the reason I where uh, I hate medicines, uh, and I also read in your program that medicines are uh, not very good for your for your body. And my my goal was to get off the medicines as soon as possible. That was my my main goal, mm-hmm. and it's uh, I had to take the medicines for from the from the rheumatolo gist. Yes, and when I came to her, I said, uh, "Can food heal myself?" And I want to take less medicine, but she said, "No, it's not possible." Yes, and I had also had, uh, 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 I spoke to another. Uh, uh, arts doctor and I said uh, can I heal it with food and they, uh, he also said no it's not possible I yes said, Jesus Christ and I'm convinced it is possible yes so I I did everything I could to uh, uh, to uh, to take less medicines uh, but I also wanted to uh, to discuss everything with my doctor yes uh, but uh, after a couple of months, uh, my uh, yeah, my uh, inflammation was, I, I think it was about only two. Yes. And I had said to, uh, to them, I wanted to, uh, yeah, to take less medicines. Yeah. And my aunt said, no, it's not possible. I said, how long do I have to take the medicines? And they said, uh, yeah, you have to to go on but i said how long if if i uh if, if my blood if my blood is okay uh, how long do we have to take it how how long do, does my blood have to be okay yes and then she said at least you have to take it one year i said no it's i can i can't live with it and uh i, I said I, I i take less medicines i Take my blood. I take uh, all the measures. Uh, I, I, I check it out, and I will uh, take less medicines if possible. But I, I do it myself. And two weeks later, she called me, and then she said, "You're still on the uh, you're still on the medicines, or did you quit with the medicines?" I, and then I said to her, uh, "I said to you, uh, I want to uh, to try things out." So I took less medicine, but not quit at all. Mm-hmm. And then she said to me, uh, now we have to quit with all the medicines because uh, my blood cells uh, were damaged by the by the sul- 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 uh, by the medicines. Okay, so let me just, uh, so take it. yeah, I've got this note from you here in one of your emails. How you said that the rheumatologist called and said, get off the medicines completely because the red and white blood cells were too low in your blood test, and that, yes. that, that was yes. caused by the sulfur salazine. Is uh, that correct? Probably, she said. But probably. Yes, that's true. Probably. Yes. But I, I know it is, because now it's now it's okay. Everything is okay now. How long ago was that? Since I quit. Uh, I think it's about... Uh, I had to quit with the medicines. It was the 30, 30 October. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then I quit medicines, and one week after that, I uh, looked at my blood, and it was still uh, the measures were still too low. Mm-hmm. And then I, uh, I, I think two weeks later, it was two or three weeks later, it was it was okay. Um, and um, were you still on the? Uh uh non-steroidal anti inflammatory drug as well as the prednisone at that time? No, I started with uh, diclofenac, then prednisone, and I had to quit prednisone and then I started right. uh, had to start with uh, sulfur salazine mm-hmm. and 
Uh, the 30th of October, I had to quit with the medicines because mm-hmm. of my uh, blood cells. Mm-hmm. And uh, the 20th of uh, November, I had to see my uh, rheumatologist again. Yeah. And yeah, then she said to me, uh, I think we had the wrong di- diagnosis. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. it's fantastic. But it really, th- those timings are pretty amazing. So. Uh, that sulfasalazine now is uh, cleared from your system, and if you've if you're feeling great, waking up every morning and and not taking twenty minutes to be able to turn off your alarm, I mean uh, that's that's a tremendous tremendous outcome. Yes, it's it's amazing, I guess. Um, but now, the doctors can't believe it. No, absolutely, um, they don't see this kind of stuff all the time. That's for sure. Um, although there is in the uh, in the Netherlands, there is a fabulous rheumatologist that is often discussed inside our um, Patterson program support by our other uh, friends from the Netherlands, um, who have a what's his of, name? Oh, I couldn't recall it off the top of my head, but um, I could. Uh, um, I can post his. Uh, name, I think that's appropriate, um, onto our uh, transcription of this recording, which will be on pattersonprogram.com. Uh, if we search for the name Frank in the search bar on the website, then this podcast will come up, even if you're listening to it sometime in the future. Um, so I will post his, uh, his name up there in case other people are looking to um, change their rheumatologist and work with someone who's well aware of our program. Um, certainly people are very, very happy with him inside our support group. Now, um, in terms of you, you embraced all aspects of our program. You took, took on board the exercise, you took on board the diet, um, you took on board, you know, things in the way that I recommend, right? How much do you think that the Bikram yoga played a role for you? Uh... I don't know because uh, for me it's uh, the role was not as great as for you because uh, at that time I had less pain when I started uh, Bikram Yoga. Okay, okay. So most and, of the most and, and, of the I the most the most of the pain I had be, before uh, I took the medicines. Yes. And before before I started the program. Yes. And then. Uh, yeah, the, the Bikram Yoga, I, I, I took the, the lessons, yep. uh, but I already had uh, less pain than in the beginning. If there's anyone... But it, it's, it's a great, it's great, it's, it, it's a great way to experience because you, you feel uh, that it's very good for your body. Yeah, oh yeah, no doubt. Well, it's, if we look at the timeline and if there's anyone who's got this kind of a little bit of skepticism in their mind that maybe the, the drugs played a big role here and uh, certainly they were present. But the ones that you took in order were the uh, diclef, dicle, I always have trouble with that word, the diclofeniac or the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Diclofenac. Right. I've, I've never taken that one. Um, and, uh, and then moved on to the prednisone. Now, both of those two drugs actually cause more leaky gut. They cause more problems with the digestive system. So, yeah. uh, so if the drugs were doing all the hard work, then um, that would have made coming off them even more catastrophic or more problematic because they would have done more uh, harm to your gut than the uh, whilst you're on it um, than than you would that that would have presented itself after coming off it. So. Um, uh, obviously, there were more factors at play than just pain suppression here. Um, the sulfasalazine looks like it has played a role in parallel as well. Um, but now that you're off that drug and cleared of its of its um, period of of lag, then you actually uh, um, are now pres- in a situation where you have um, kind of you know no meds, exactly in terms of the way you were in terms of no meds before you undertook all of these procedures, and here you are a completely different man to what you were before. So um, it's, it really is a uh, transformation of, um, of 
massive proportions that has been uh, underpinned by natural natural interventions which have been very powerful so it's it's a great you're a great case study frank now what i'm worried about from your earlier email is your thoughts about going back onto other foods and stuff are you are you really sort of uh uh eager to go and eat things that aren't going to support you in terms of your health uh no but uh what you could read is uh I like the beer and spending time with my friends drinking a uh, beer and uh I know I know my my diet uh will always be the same, uh, always be different than before I got this but yeah I I think I want to try a beer again and then look at the results <laughs> yeah. what it do to my body but yes but I I I I quit I I uh I I I liked meat very much i took a lot of meat took a lot of fish uh, a lot of fat products uh, also a lot of fruit and vegetables but it was cooked vegetables i took lots of vegetable cooked but i know i will change my diet i, I know in the future i will always take a lot of uh, 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 vegetables and fruits because i know it's yeah, very good for my body but I guess and up till now I my my diet is totally different than seven months ago. I lost uh, twelve kilograms of uh, of my body. I was I wasn't fit at all, but now I, I was eighty kilos, uh, and now I'm uh, seventy kilos, something like that. So yes, I'm a little I'm a little bit skinny now. <laughs> well, if you have, I, I think, I, I think, I, th- I think, uh, yeah, I, I will drink uh, a couple of beers with my buddy buddies, uh, only not as much as what I used to uh, drink. But uh, my my diet will, will, will never be the same as uh, seven months ago. So, um, I think but that you- once once we see the power of the intervention, then it's almost like when you've when you see something that uh you can you know you can never unsee something right you can never unexperience what it's like to get pain relief using these methods and therefore uh you just can't ignore the possibilities of sticking with this in the future if pain comes back because um the pain can come back and that's the problem so whilst uh, a beer or two you might be fine um, you know, I, I think that what I'm reassured about is that you're not about to go and start having not just the beers, but the pub food and the uh, the lifestyle of sitting around and and not doing a whole bunch uh, and and maybe getting symptoms back because we certainly don't want that. So, um, no, yeah, of course not. Yeah. Um, well, uh, what parts of the um, what parts of the program did you find that were most beneficial if you were able to pinpoint one or two things and maybe um, help other people to, um, to focus on those areas? Uh, to give you some ideas, in the past people have mentioned things like the green drinks or they've mentioned the most important thing was when they started to get inflammation, to go back to the baseline foods for a few days uh, and then get back to where they're up to. Other people have said, it's about you know stopping food by seven o'clock at night so that you're not um, having to digest uh, food late at night when you have a weak digestive system. Um, were there things were, were there some specifics that you felt were most beneficial for you? Uh, yeah, what, what I said uh, a couple of minutes ago for me it was very important uh, to uh, to read the background uh, why you uh, the, the information you you gave with the leaky gut and all other kind of stuff, because uh, when I went to the hospital, they said you have it and you have it the whole of your life, and I thought no, it can be possible this. And you give uh, with the program uh, the first thing with, when I read it, I had hope that there was something to do about it, mm. and I think that's that's very important if you believe in something. Uh, yeah, then then it, it's yeah, it's uh, 
yeah, if, if you believe in something, it's it's, it's very good, and then you 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 want to try it, and you will do it to your you you do your best, you do your utmost. And yes. I think a lot a lot of people don't believe it because they go to the rheumatologist, and he's and he or she says there's nothing you can do about it, and they accept it. And I know there are some other people in my neighborhood and they know I've also Roma and they are following, following me. They are asking questions. What do you do? And, uh, <laughs> and sometimes they say, Oh, it's not good for you because they see that your body changes it. Uh, I'm a lot thinner. I was, uh, uh, had a lot of more muscles than I have now. Mm -hmm. I'm thinner. And they say, Oh, it's not good for you. I said, ah, I feel, I feel terrific. I have no pain. I, <laughs> I have no medicines, but, people don't believe it and they want to see it with me and then they start believing it and now they ask me from what do you do and what did you do uh, and I can give them information so I think it's very important for people to to, uh, to have faith that it's possible to cure yourself with a with foot and I took, it to, I took it to extreme because I took a lot of food I eat the whole day green foods yeah. And especially spinach, because I, I saw on the list it's very good for you. Yes. So I take a lot of spinach. Yes. And yeah. Uh, did you do them now? Uh, part of my life. Did you do the spinach a lot in green smoothies, or did you just eat them in? in... Yes, 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 yes. Right. Both. And... Both, because I I knew it's very good, so I took it. And in my uh, uh, every morning I take a shake with uh, with fruit and vegetables and a lot of spinach. Yeah, and also I take in the afternoon I, I take a salad, and there's also spinach in it. And in the night I take a lot. I take uh, raw food. Yeah, but also uh, a, a little, a little bit cooked, and uh, so much I, I can eat the whole day. But <laughs> yeah, my body can have it because uh, I'm losing weight. So yes, now but, that I. I now that so you've been through the, so what i say to that is it's easier to put weight back on than what it is to get rid of inflammation so getting rid of inflammation if we quote the doctor is impossible to be done with foods exercise naturally right and yet you've just done what they consider is impossible but if you ask a lot of people including doctors can you put on weight <laughs> everyone looks at you like what kind of stupid question is that of course you can put on weight the question becomes a challenge when it is can you reduce inflammation at the same time as gaining weight and that is a very very hard thing to do i believe that we can maintain our weight whilst lowering inflammation it's tricky and it's slow because we're always making mistake one way or the other we're always getting more inflammation reduction but we're losing a bit of weight or where we actually might be gaining a little bit of weight but with that comes an increase or a bump in pain so the the um you know normally um if people are accelerating their inflammation reduction there's going to be some weight loss with that because the foods that are so anti-inflammatory by nature don't have as much calorie density as the ones that we're used to eating. And like you say, you're eating a lot of food all the time just to keep your um, energy intake up. But at the same time, you're also, with each bite of spinach, you're also causing inflammation reduction. So, um, yeah, so there's a time and a place for putting the weight back on. I was like yourself. I went through a big weight loss period, um, and then it stabilized and plateaued. It doesn't go down forever. It gets to a point where... Um, you know, it matches your calorie intake, the amount of leafy greens that you eat uh, and the amount that you exercise to a lesser extent because exercise actually doesn't burn as much calories as what most people think. Uh, you'll observe that if you watch people on the treadmill at the gym. They're all trying to lose weight by working out at the gym and they're, uh, you know, all they need to do is just shift to a low-fat plant-based diet. I mean, it's trivial to lose weight when you actually do the, do the correct things. Um, yes. And so where I'm leading with this long kind of uh, long piece of chat is um, when you start eating foods that are more um, dense in calories 
And when you start doing some exercises for your lower legs, like some some uh, lunges or some deadlifts or some squats, now that your knee's feeling better and you do them in a nice controlled manner. Uh, and if you're not sure about how to do that, then reach out to Carl Reader, who was on a previous podcast. He's our uh, recommended um, exercise physiologist for the program now. He's helping a lot of people um, inside Patterson Program Support. Very affordable, very accessible, great guy, works with all sorts of physical um, limitations to build muscle and strength. And so with some lower leg exercises where most of our muscle mass is, we can gain some, uh, some, some uh, improved muscle mass uh, just at home on the floor or, or you know, in, the, in the bedroom. And when we add some more calorie-dense foods, uh, not even extreme calorie dense foods like nuts and so on, but just mid range things, uh, maybe even some chickpeas or something like that, some lentils, beans. Then we're able to see the weight stop falling quickly. And normally, most people can um, slowly add some weight back on whilst holding their inflammation low. So that's the next step for you, Frank, is putting a bit of weight back on. Um, if you're 80 before, you're 70 now. You know, with the right strategy, you'll find that nice balance between keeping inflammation where it's at and, uh, and adding a few more foods and doing some exercises and getting it probably back up into like 72s and 3s in a month or two. Um, and then you sort of don't sort of obsess about it so much once it's not quite as um, at the no, bottom. No, I'm not, of, I'm not yeah. obsessed about it. Or... Oh, you're not. Yeah. Okay. I'm not obsessed about it, but it's... Uh... It's a uh, change, uh, change from uh, change from your body, and yes, for me, yes. it's uh, yeah. I want to gain uh, weight again, and I know it's possible. But yes, uh, I had also had an operation on my shoulder, so I can't exercise now. But if I'm gonna exercise, I'm gonna eat more, and I take more uh, nuts. Yes, and then it's, it's not a problem. So yeah, and and work on the lower body muscles first, as I mentioned, because you can often. Um, put on some weight there more quickly than what you can uh, on the upper body, especially since you've got that shoulder rehabilitation uh, at the moment yes, going on. it's true. Now, you had a couple of I'm questions. A, I'm a little bit biking. Okay, okay, excellent. Yeah, you can increase the resistance on the bike so that the, um, you spend yes. a little bit less time on the bike and make it more, more challenging, and the body will need to grow muscle to uh, accommodate for the more resistance. So, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's another good option. Now, you had a couple of questions for me on the email, and I thought we might address those before we wrap up. Um, um, now, your questions uh, that you wrote were, why do rheumatologists deny that food can heal you? <laughs> and then you also um, had another one. Uh, do you think that there's some kind of um, relationship between um, their sort of way that they are paid and the medicines that they provide. So um, would you like me to go ahead and offer my thoughts on those two questions? Yes, but because I think uh, they're earning money because they're so easy to, to give you medicines and they don't want to listen to, uh, to things that when, when they, don't can, they, they can, they're not allowed to make money. So I like to hear your opinion about that. Yeah, and it is only an opinion. And in this particular case, um, with regards to getting commissions for medicines, um, probably a naive opinion of mine. Here in Australia, I'm not aware of it um, because I've fortunately not been to too many doctors other than the one rheumatologist that I went to over and over and over and over again. Um, he's the most loveliest man on the planet, and I can't even dream that uh, any of that's going on. I'd be uh, shocked and I, I just, it's, it's, as far as I'm aware, it's just not something that happens in this country. But again, and that sounds very naive, and I probably am, um, but um, I have only the most glowing and wonderful things to say about um, the doctors that I've worked with in this country. Um, and certainly the uh, rheumatologist that I saw um, was very, very, very open to me requiring the only amount of medication that was necessary to match my symptoms. And when we got into a situation where my symptoms were 
very low consistently, then he was more than happy to accommodate my requests to lower the medications so as to only have enough to suppress the symptoms adequately and not have so much sort of almost excess medication in my system over and above what was required. So, you know, um, I never suspected any, anything other than just like ideal operation and ideal practice from him. I don't know what it's like around the rest of the world, uh, and I wouldn't want to speculate. I just don't have any experience. But um, certainly with the other question, which is why do rheumatologists deny that food can heal you? The reason that I believe this is the case is, well, it's multi, multi factors here, but one of the main things is that they are educated through scientific published papers. So medical journal publications where studies show this and studies show that. Now, because there's no money to be made in showing that spinach is good for you, those studies don't exist. And so if your education is founded upon a certain factor and within that factor there's no data, then they simply can't recommend or encourage you to go with something of which there is no data. So that's part of it. Now, there's another part of it, which is that they've seen failure after failure after failure of patients coming into their office saying, hey, I've just gone gluten-free and look, I've eliminated a bit of my symptoms. And the next patient comes in and says, hey, you know, I've tried this ketogenic diet and I'm feeling a bit better. And then the next one comes in and says, hey, you know what, nightshade vegetables. I gave them up and I'm feeling better. And then they see those three patients again in three months, six months and a year. And those patients are all just as bad as what they were before. And so what the doctor does is develops this feeling that all of these dietary changes, they're all a waste of time. And they see it so frequently that they end up just shrugging, rolling their eyes. And in some cases, I've heard lots of different scenarios. I've had uh, clients tell me that their rheumatologists have thrown their pen across the room, have told them, well, if you're not going to take my drugs, then I don't want to work with you. You're not my patient anymore. And these kind of things are spawned from lots of other patients who've had failures with half-hearted or inappropriate attempts to change their diet. And then there's another factor on this, which is even if you do everything correctly, not everyone has your results either, Frank. We've got people, uh, and I'm happy to, to talk about this, who follow Patterson program only the dietary component and then not make enough progress to affect their, their blood tests. And that's because, first of all, they could be under-medicated, so their inflammation could be way out of control. So if we're, trying to put out, if we're trying to put out this extreme chemical fire that's going on with only a couple of um, fire hydrants, then the inflammation is going to continue to get on top of us. And so, um, um, so there are also cases where... It's not enough just to do the diet either, which is why this program encompasses diet, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation, and medication management. So we need to have low levels of inflammation. Maybe, maybe, I, know, maybe I know something else, because uh, I think, and it's also, uh, uh, there are results uh, which... Uh, but uh, breathing, but healing uh, by oxygen. Like the Wim, about it? Like Wim Hof method? Yes, 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 yes. For something like that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I, and, I, and I also read, I don't know if you heard about it, uh, which auto, uh, auto vesting therapy. There are all people uh, having results with that. Hmm. Um, maybe it's your... Uh, Dutch accent, or maybe it's I haven't heard it before, but um, I uh, I'm not sure if I caught that one or I understood what that one was. Maybe if you could just say it one more time. Oh, uh, it's it's out out of vacuum therapy. Out of vacuum. Okay, all right. I still don't know much uh, more from what. If, if they if they want to search on the internet, it's uh, Doctor Kunst. Okay, all right. I'll get you to send that through the spelling and so forth in case people want to 
check it out. Again, go to our transcription of this podcast on our website. Search for Frank in the search bar at the top of the blog page, which is forward slash blog, and uh, you'll be able to find this and find that link. So, you know, with all of those vari- variables at play, including someone's age, including how compliant they were to following these dietary changes, including what their drug history was, how much prednisone, painkillers, how much antibiotics they've taken in the past, which is affecting how much they absorb the foods. I mean, there's so many variables at play. You don't have two people who are actually the same following any kind of dietary. Yeah. And so rheumatologists ultimately get this wild variation in outcomes from massive variations in people's approach with dietary changes. Ultimately, they just say, look, you know, there's no evidence and uh, just, you know, eat a healthy diet because it's just they don't want to waste also time talking about it when they also aren't experts on that topic. And so what we can do is we can just go into our rheumatologist meetings knowing that we know a lot about this topic and we can ask them questions about the things that they know things about, which is matching pills to problems. So that's, uh, that's my rant on that. Yes, I, I think you're right because uh, every person is different and I know uh, what I've done. A lot of people uh, who I know also have uh, Roma say, I can do what you do, you do what you did. So uh, I think that it can be a problem uh, because yes. people can uh, change their diet but also don't uh, exercise or do the other things. So, exactly. Just... But, but it, I, I only hope that people can have, uh, that they have hope, that they have faith, that there is something to do about it. That's, that's only, uh, and what they, do, what they do with it, it's their problem. But uh, I, I spoke to people and they have no hope at all. And now they have hope because they see me. So That's right. That's right. Well, well done, you know, and... Um, you doing this, not just for yourself, but now you're finding that other people are inspired and that you're giving people some uh, yeah. hope. Hope, absolutely. Hope is just having a game plan to get from A to B. So you've just provided them yeah. with a place to get that game plan um, or that you can talk to them directly about how to, how to go about it. Um, so thank you. You know, I just want to uh, reiterate that uh, your achievements are, uh, are, are remarkable and impressive and exciting. Um, and, um, you know, well done. Thank you very much. All right. So before we wrap up, was there anything else you wanted to cover? Anything else you wanted to mention, uh, relevant to the topic? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, what you've done, it's, uh, for me, it's, it's very great because, uh, people say to me, uh, what you're doing is very good. I said, uh, what I do is maybe a little bit good, but the person who did it before me uh, will find everything out. Uh, you spent much, much, and much more time on searching uh, all, the, all the items, and I only have to do it. So for me, it's much more easier than, than it was for you. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you, Frank. I'm, um, you, know, it's, um, you know, it's so nice to hear your comments uh, on that and uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, some of my struggle was, uh, was, was of benefit and um, uh, it was motivating for me at the time when I was going through it to think that someday this, these things that I'm learning and these lessons and these um, discoveries are going to be helpful not just for me but for other people. So um, in a way this is uh, sort of something that I imagined in the future and uh, and it's just uh, feels really really good to know that you've benefited and uh, and now you're also helping others and certainly from doing this podcast with me you'll be able to uh, help a lot more people who listen to your story and uh, and feel inspired. I hope so, so. Yeah. So thank you so much. Um, I know we weren't able to do this via video um, because we had some internet connections, but I hope that everyone has enjoyed listening to our conversation. And uh, thank you so much, Frank. I'll uh, be uh, in touch and hope to hear from you down the track. Yes, I will do that. Thank you. And thank you very much also.